in lockdown, the government scandalously made it mandatory for anyone working in a care home to be fully vaccinated or be sacked. This happened with no risk analysis or of the cost-benefit impact on care sector, and there was nothing parliamentarians could do about it. 40,000 care workers were driven out of their jobs then, and now, almost daily, we here discuss the crisis of care worker shortages and never acknowledged how bad lawmaking contributed to this disastrous state of affairs. No wonder the public become both confused and disillusioned. That is why it's so important to shine a light on anti-democratic lawmaking processes. The shocking use of disguised legislative instruments should, in fact, be front page news. A couple of thoughts on solutions. In the reports, permanent secretaries claim that increased use of statutory instruments is due to the competition for parliamentary time. Isn't the solution here obvious? There should be fewer laws. Indeed, to the Minister, can I repeat the question posed by Lord Simon in a 1990 debate? Will His Majesty's Government reduce the quantity and improve the quality of legislation? I suggest that lawmaking has become a technocratic substitute for political leadership. Is this because politicians lack the imagination or moral courage to try and persuade citizens of the need for social change and instead rely on the law to compel it? Also, so many laws feel unnecessary and performative, headline grabbing responses to demands that something must be done. As we enter the report stage of the Public Order Bill, as many noble lords have noted, we have a statute book full of legislation that could deal with these egregious aspects of modern protest tactics. The problem is they're not being enforced, and more laws won't solve this problem. By the way, the enthusiasm for creating new laws to tackle all and every issue is not just a weakness of the Conservative administration. Often the opposition's main demands on government are even more if different laws, or tabling myriad amendments so detailed that they could constitute new laws in their own right. And on con time constraints, why are so many bills such enormous, complex, impenetrable tomes containing everything by the kitchen sink? Is this politician's attempt at micromanaging every conceivable aspect of the public's autonomous choices because they don't trust voters? And such expansive bills are often far removed from their original intent. The online safety bill is a case in point, once conceived narrowly but importantly as protecting children. Now so huge, it represents an existential threat to free speech for adults. This, my lords, is a crisis, and not just of democracy, but of our freedoms as well.